Mr. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Last Wednesday's airstrikes obliterated Al Quds Hospital in Aleppo. They blew apart at least 50 men, women, and children. It killed one of the last remaining pediatricians in the city. A murderous airstrike. There were almost 300 airstrikes in Aleppo over the last 10 days. Civilians, often in crowds, were repeatedly struck. What are individuals in wars today? Expendable commodities, dead or alive. Patients and doctors are legitimate targets. Women, children, the sick, the wounded, and their caregivers are condemned to death. Stop these attacks. I went to Kunduz, Afghanistan, following the U.S. attack on our trauma center on October 3rd, 2015. One of the survivors, an MSF nurse, whose left arm was blown off during the relentless airstrike, told me something that keeps haunting me daily. He said that when fighting erupted in Kunduz, MSF staff was told that his trauma center was a safe place. Over and over again, we said that. He told me, we believed you. But did you know, did you know that we will be bombed? I told him that until October 3rd, I truly believe that the hospital was a safe place. I cannot say that anymore about any medical facilities on the front lines today. In Afghanistan, the Central African Republic, South Sudan, Sudan, Syria, Ukraine, and Yemen, Hospitals are routinely bombed, raided, looted, or burned to the ground. Medical personnel are threatened. Patients are shot in their beds. Broad attacks on communities and precise attacks on the health facilities are described as mistakes, are denied outright, or are simply met with silence. In reality, they amount to massive and discriminate and disproportionate, disproportionate civilian targeting and setting. In the worst cases, they are acts of terror. The effect of attacks against health facilities emanate far beyond those immediately killed and injured. They demolish routine and life-saving health care for all. They make life impossible, full stop. On October 26, 2015, a Saudi-led coalition airstrike hit an MSF hospital in Hedon, in the north of Yemen, leaving at least 200,000 people without life-saving care. It was the first of three of MSF facilities partially or completely destroyed in Yemen over a period of three months. Attacks on MSF facilities provide only a glimpse into the brutality of war. Attacks on other hospitals and clinics and schools, markets, houses of worship, our routine, 
local health workers bear the brunt of these abuses. We are at a deadly impasse. We can no longer assume that fully functioning hospital in which patients are fighting for their lives are out of bounds. Hospitals and patients have been dragged onto the battlefield. In Jezim, a town in southern Syria, citizens have protested in front of a hospital to prevent its reopening. They know what happens to functioning hospitals. We are facing an epidemic of attacks on health facilities, impeding our ability to do our core work. And to date, our calls, our calls for independent investigation have gone unheeded. Accountability begins with independent and impartial fact-finding. Perpetrators cannot be investigators, judges, and juries. Make no mistake, we will relentlessly denounce attack on healthcare. We will, sp we will speak out loudly and with force about what we witness in the field. Medicine must not be a deadly occupation. Patients must not be attacked or slaughtered in their beds. We physician, take an oath when we join the medical profession. We treat everybody, every individual, regardless of who they are, and regardless of their religion, their race, or on which side they may fight. Even if they are wounded combatants, or if they are labeled as criminals or terrorists. Hospital must not be attacked or forcibly entered by armed personnel, including to search for and capture patients. To turn our back on these basic principles is to turn our back on the foundation of medical ethics. Medical ethics cannot be buried by war. The neutrality of wartime medical care cannot be stamped out by state sovereignty or domestic law, especially in an age of counterterrorism and counterinsurgency, characterized by shifting alliances and murky rules of engagement. While the nature of warfare may have changed, the rules of war have not. You are charged with protecting peace and security. Yet, four of the five permanent members of this council have, to varying degrees, been associated with coalition responsible for attacks on health structure over the last year. These include the NATO-led coalition in Afghanistan, the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen, the Russia-backed Syrian-led coalition. You, therefore, must live up to your extraordinary responsibilities and set an example for all the states. I repeat, stop these attacks. The discussion here today cannot amount to empty rhetoric. This resolution cannot end up like so many others, including those passed on Syria over the past five years, routinely violated with impunity. Healthcare in Syria is thematically targeted and besieged areas are cynically denied medical care uphold the obligations. Ensure the protection of the impartial provision of healthcare in conflict. Also, 
support the obligation of health workers to treat all sick and wounded without discrimination. Dr. Maz, the pediatrician murdered in Aleppo last week, was killed for saving lives. Today, we remember his humanity and bravery, shared by so many patients, nurses, doctors, communities, and MSF staff caught up in conflict for their sake. Translate this resolution into action. Recommit unambiguously to the norms that govern the conduct of war. This resolution must lead to all state and non-state actors stopping the carnage. You must also pressure your allies to end attacks on healthcare and population in conflict areas. We will not leave patients behind, and we will not be silent. Seeking or providing health care must not be a death sentence. You will be judged not on your words today, but on your actions. Your work has only begun. Please, make this resolution save lives. Thank you.